Hello friends, welcome to another episode of Blossoms and Bourbon. My name is Mark. I'm the owner here at Creative Occasions and it's a pleasure to welcome you to my workroom. Um, you know, it's getting to be spring and I don't know about you, but I just love this time of year. I love the sense of rebirth. I love the colors of the flowers that are coming out. Um, it just makes me feel so good after having been through that sort of gray period of winter. Um, and so I thought we would talk about how you can bring a little bit of spring into your home. And part of that, um, you know, I recognize in the economy of buying flowers, flowers last for several days and then they're gone. And is there a way that we could maximize the length of time that we get to enjoy flowers? One of the ways that we can do that is with plants. And this time of year, there are lots of options for where you can buy small, beautiful flowering and non-flowering uh, plants that you can enjoy in your home. Um, so we're gonna do some groupings of plants in different containers to show you kind of what that might look like, um, how you can add just a bit of spring to your house. Um, in choosing a container, you do wanna be sure that you have something that is waterproof because you're gonna have to water the plants to make sure that they're happy. This wooden container obviously does not have something in it. So I'm using this product that's called Polyfoil, which is actually a foil that has a plastic layer adhered to it. The plastic layer is waterproof. So we're gonna just put that green side down right in this little wooden trug. And sometimes depending on the container you buy or if you have something at home, it may have a plastic liner already in it. And if so, that's great. You can use, if you don't have this polyfoil, you can use a trash bag. Um, if it's a thin trash bag, you might wanna try doubling it. Uh, sometimes the pots are sharp and will have edges that might cut through, but um, be sure to get something that's gonna keep the water intact in this little container. Now, basically I've got some assorted, uh, this is a peperonia, peperomia, um, a fern, I've got a calancho and a hyacinth. All I picked primarily because of the colors. And literally this is as easy as just kind of grouping these in the way that pleases you. Um, kind of just drop them in. These are four inch plants. And if you're doing them like me, in this case, is just something that I want some color for, for a short period of time in my house, really you can do whatever mixture you like. If this is gonna be more of a long-term thing that you're hoping to enjoy for months or more, then you wanna pay closer attention to the types of plants and make sure that they are cohabitable and that they enjoy being with each other and that they have similar kinds of um, growing requirements. Um, all right, so we're just gonna take a little bit of sheet moss and we're gonna just kind of tuck that in around the edge just to kind of even give this a little more natural look. Literally just as those these were growing. And I think that's part of what I like about it so much. When you're watering plants like this, if the container is so that the water can be shared by all the plants that are in the container, then that's great. You can kind of water from the bottom and the pots will take up water through the soil and the root system in the bottom of the, of the pot. Um, if that's not the case and you wanna be sure that you're treating all the plants properly, you might wanna be sure to actually just water each individual plant. So a bit of water here on the hyacinth, another bit of water here, a bit of water here and so on just to make sure that everybody's nice and covered and that they're staying happy. Okay, there it is. Pretty simple, pretty quick. Just a nice little colorful plant grouping uh, that you might enjoy in your home. Um, I do love the simplicity of all green as well. And when I saw these ferns, I knew that I was gonna have to do something related to the ferns. So I found this white container actually at Home Goods, and it's designed to be a serving bowl, uh, which is you know cool, and it would certainly work very well for that. The thing that's gonna make it so nice for us is it's about the right height for four inch plants. Um, it's also flat on the bottom, which is also gonna allow the plants to sit well uh, inside. So I wanna do something all green in this white container. And I've got just this assortment of different types of ferns that we literally are gonna just tuck in And if you're not scoring the kind of plants you want, come see us at Creative Occasions. We, uh, we have a lot of plants that we keep around for things like this. We do plant groupings for clients. Oh, let's see. 
I think I'm going to go with this one instead. And really, this is just a matter of doing what's pleasing. You know, does that look good? Do you like the scale and the balance? The way that the tendrils kind of flow out from each other? And we'll do the same thing with the moss. Right around the edge. This is actually a container that I might water from the bottom. Uh, because all those plants pots are sitting flat, I think it really might work well that we could just put water in the bottom and those little ferns would take them up. I do also know based on ferns that they like high humidity. So if you have this in an area of your home that's a little drier, you might want to mist it with a little fine mister. Um, just some plain water, room temperature, to kind of keep the uh, humidity up for these. All right. Again, you can see how quickly these go together. And that is lovely. That would be great on your kitchen table. It would be great on your island. Um, really lots of different places that you could use this. And it would be beautiful. Maybe a customer will come in and buy that tomorrow. All right, last one I want to show you is strictly just for Easter. Um, as you've seen, I'm sure the blue and white, blue and white chinoiserie uh, pottery is back in vogue. It has been for many, many years. It's come and gone out of favor. Um, I love it. My wife and I have a lot of it in our home. And we actually sell these bowls here at our shop. And this is one of my favorite pieces in the shop. So. We're gonna do something, this obviously is watertight. I don't have to worry about waterproofing this in any way, but because it's got a bit of a curve and because it's kind of got a little kind of hump in the center, I wanna do kind of level that out a little bit so that the pots will have a flat surface to rest on. So, gonna take our good friend, the pebbles. You do wanna be gentle when you're dumping these into the bowl. You don't want to just uh, crash and burn with, you know, cracking the bowl. That would be terrible. So really just, I don't think we need more than that. Just a fine layer of something that's going to kind of even out the bottom. And then we're going to work with some really beautiful spring things, some daffodils, some hyacinths, tulips. Are you starting to get the spring vibe? I hope so. All right, let's see if we can make this happen. What I'm gonna do is just take some smaller pots, kind of tuck those in around the side so that we get a little more fullness with this. Now, that squeezing together has called the pot, caused the pots to tip a little bit. So let's try it without the small ones, just to see what that looks like. So if I were gonna leave this for an extended period of time in my home, I would probably go with this arrangement. Um, moss this out and because the pots are a little more level, but because I, you know, more is always more, right? Um, I'm gonna put the rest of them in there. And then we're just gonna pretend that we're doing this for a party instead, all right? Yeah, this is one of those cases where they're gonna start squishing around and just moving on me. All right, let's go with that. That's not too bad. That doesn't look horrible in the back. All right, let's moss it out. This is definitely a scenario of where you would want to be sure that you're watering each one of these pots individually, just to make sure that they're getting their fair share of water and nutrients. I have done this before and even after the blooms are spent, uh, deadheaded this and then just put them out in the yard 
potted them right in the yard. And in some cases, they'll come back the next year. It, it is a little bit iffy with this type of bulb, but um, you can sure give that a whirl. I'm going to tuck a little moss up in the pot as well. So that space in the center doesn't look too obvious and open. And yeah, be sure and put some paper down or something on your workspace so that uh, you're not dealing with this because the moss is kind of messy. Something else that would be perfect with this, which I didn't think to bring out, is some curly willow. You could just cut some branches of curly willow and stick them right in the dirt so that they twist up and add some height to this. Uh, that would be really super fun. We'll pull these little plant tags out so you don't see those. But yeah, I think that would be perfect. That would be great for a spring party, uh, sitting on the kitchen island uh, on a sideboard. It'd be great. Well, um, Welcome spring. I know, I, I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm sure glad that it's here. And um, I'm sure glad also to have flowers. That's always makes me feel better. And um, I'm sure it does you too. So we thought for the bourbon portion tonight that we would try something a little bit different and actually make a cocktail. So I'm gonna do a little switcheroo here with the table and then we're gonna make a delicious old fashioned, okay? I don't know about you, but when I'm drinking old fashions, I really like to use a rye bourbon uh, because it has a little more spice to it. And I don't know, just in a mixed drink, I really like that. Um, one of the things that this recipe calls for also is an orange peel. So we're gonna do that. Just a simple orange peel. We're gonna try not to get too much of the pith um, in the cut. So we're just gonna prep a couple of those. because Jason and I both are gonna enjoy this. All right, so we'll kind of set that to the side. And the basic part of this drink actually is bourbon, simple syrup, bitters, and then the orange peel garnish. So it's a very, very simple drink, goes together quickly. And we're gonna use a mixing glass to mix in. And in the mixing glass, we're gonna add two ounces of bourbon. God, this really does feel like a cooking show now. One of the reasons I put the ice in the mixing glass first is also to kind of cool the glass off. And yes, if you're paying attention, I said two ounces. I'm doing four because I'm making two drinks. I knew somebody would catch me on that. All right. So, rabbit hole, boxer grail, rye. It's a great one. We need a quarter of an ounce of simple syrup. Simple syrup, by the way, is equal parts sugar and water. Heat it up and, until the uh, sugar dissolves. So we're gonna do about a half an ounce since we're doing two drinks here. That adds a little bit of sweetness to it. And then two dashes of bitters. So that's four of those. And then we're gonna stir. And this really is just kind of designed to combine all those flavors together. All right. Glasses. I love these large ice spheres, so. We're using ice spheres for the drinks tonight. All 
Oh man, isn't that pretty? I hate to admit how much I like these. All right, then we're gonna take that orange peel. We're gonna pop the skin just to kind of express the oils of the orange a little bit. And then we're gonna rub that orange right on the glass. Drop it in. Express the peel. Rub it. Right in the glass. Come on, behave yourself. And then the piece de resistance is a bourbon cherry. These happen to be the Woodford brand of bourbon cherry. So these are like those dark Bing cherries that have been soaked in bourbon. Um, Woodford sells these under their own name, of course. Uh, my son Jared has actually made these before. They're pretty easy to make. You just take these gorgeous big cherries and soak them in your favorite bourbon. So there we have an old fashioned. Jason, tell me what you think. I'm gonna make you talk one day. I'm gonna make you talk. So let's see what this is like, folks. Hmm. I don't know. I think it's pretty tasty. The, um, the rye has just a little bit of spice, but it's kind of offset by um, the simple syrup, which adds the sweetness to it. Very tasty drink. And I don't know, my family, we kind of consider the cherry to be like having dessert after dinner. You finish the drink and then you dig the cherry out of the glass and have that for dessert. So uh, I hope you'll give this old fashioned a try. I'll post the recipe in the comments um, for the uh, old fashioned so you can try it at home. And I hope that you've enjoyed a little bit of spring here today, a little bit of old fashioned. And until next time, cheers to you and to flowers every day. Thanks for joining us. And don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell icon. <laughs> I always forget that. Cheers.